Welcome to uh, another episode of Skillets World, and my guest today is someone that needs no introduction, but I'm going to give him an introduction I might, anyway. I might need one. Like, I'm going to give him one anyway. Yeah, yeah. Uh, podcaster, freaking comedian, uh, all-round artist, uh, a believer of truth. I go by the, he goes by the name of David Bujanic. I don't know why I said I go by the name. All right. Thank you for coming today, man. Nice. Thank you for joining. It's a pleasure to be here, man. You know, there's only a few times I get emotionally invested into... Uh, what's going on on TV or in social media or whatever? Because you know a lot of stuff is just cannon fodder, really. It's a lot of the same mm. old, same old. Uh, but you, 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 you somehow know how to put out content that gets me emotionally invested. Is it? Yeah, bro. I love your stuff, man. I'm a fan. I don't really put out a lot of stuff anymore, but I hate not you, as bro. much as it used to. <laughs> but what is going on well, with that? That, that? That's the question I'm asking. It's, it's what are you working on at the moment? Because you're a man of so many different mm. trades, a jack of all trades, and. I love, I love to see when you put out stuff. Mm, not much, you know. Okay. I wouldn't say I'm like working on... There's obviously this idea is there that can be activated upon. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I've been enjoying a little step back. Yeah. A little step back. Free, Which is always good. Carrie yeah. Irving style. Just <laughs> harden. Do you know what I mean? Back, back. Take a little... You need a little Bef sometimes... Before a little, you do the... little manoeuvre. A little, yeah. little self-reflection moment. So... I've been enjoying that. I went out. To, I went out to the World Cup with with um, Goal.com, and that really sort that of that was amazing, bro. Had just kind of gave me a new lease. It felt like you. It felt like you were at every game. I was at twenty four games. Yeah, it was incredible. So like that for me was was really really amazing. That was like so eye opening, um, and I felt rejuvenated when I came back. Yeah. Um, so I've I've enjoyed that, man. And when I come back, I've sort of been resting. To be honest, just been okay. resting, taking it easy relaxing and there's always like ways to activate and, and go forth and, and carry on but I think I'm a person who just I think I like to think a lot and maybe yeah. sometimes that that isn't the best thing for creativity for sure right. if you're trying to activate and, and be seen and be out there um, but I'm sort of comfortable with that now whereas I think, I think before I'd be uncomfortable with those uncomfortable moments of sure. sitting with yourself sure I but mean well that's sort of enjoy that that's quite amazing that you could actually have the foresight to do that because I feel like when you're in the industry that you're in, it feels like every day you have to churn out some sort of content. Yeah, but there's so much content now, bro. Yeah. I really became a consumer, especially like since I'd say like the COVID period, like that whole, that whole period, like the two years, I just really started to consume and observe rather than participate. And I think that's just given me like a different perspective on right. content and perhaps many, many things, but it just made, made me view everything from a more of like a distant plane Right. Rather than being so like immersed in it personally, um, and then here and there I'd I'd kind of activate myself. Whereas you know it was the World Cup or whatever. Where I think I saw poet when I came back, and then he said to me like, you know, everybody was like kind of watching your content, or just on Instagram stories, I, I, Twitter, I or whatever. Always. Just because I guess there wasn't many of us out there from from the UK, um, so like people would seem apparently there was virality happening. Um, I saw with the numbers and a few videos went a bit viral. Which is quite interesting. I, f I do find virality fascinating, and um, I guess in my case, I've been online putting out putting out things for the last 10, 12 years, mm -hmm. and to still sort of here and there be able to connect and transcend into various worlds is is really it's cool, man. I'm yeah. grateful that that the opportunities are still there, and I'm, I've managed to like in some way, in my own way, stay. Stay stay alive in this sort of um, content world, um, but yeah, it's been it's been a fascinating journey. Well, let's talk about that journey. Let's circle back to the beginning. Um, you're originally from Serbia. You're a Serbian. You always rep uh, yeah. Serbia ethnically. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you uh, migrated to, to London at a very young age. Yeah, yeah, six. At six, okay. Yeah, yeah. Five, five, five. You're five years old. Six, yeah, yeah. In North London. Nah, nah, west, you moved west. around, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so where, where where did you first? Where did your family oh, first move to? Basewater. Okay, all right. Baseball was was the first. Do you have place. A, do you have a place that you would call home, childhood wise? I mean, you might be, you might have you might be different now as an adult, but mm. is there a place that you associate at your youth with an area or northwest London? Right. Mm. Okay. I'd say I spent my formative years, especially those, those like teenage years, uh, secondary school was was northwest in Wilsden. So for me, that was um, I'd say always has like a soft spot for me. Okay. And I spent the most time there, and then. Afterwards, um, after you know, my family had some things going on, we yeah. ended up moving around again. So sure. I ended up being like, nah, it's north. But I'd say northwest because that was that big chunk of from maybe 
10 to 18, you know, it's sure. just like, okay, you're kind of those fondest memories, yeah. secondary school, having a laugh, I'd say that's, that's my kind of heart. Is that where your sense of, it's yours, because you're quite, you've got a unique sense of humour and was that built through family or was that built through the people that you went to school with? I think school. I think school and like maybe culturally as well, like the Balkans, the, the region, you know, not just Serbs, but yeah. Bosnians, Albanians, Turks, Greeks. There's just a very unique type of humour around that region. Um, it's very dark, it's very like anything goes. And I think that's sort of been ingrained from a young age. Right. And then when you when you kind of marry, marinate that with sort of ends humour, you know, like yeah, growing yeah, up in, yeah, in yeah, secondary course. school and ends. <laughs> with the mandem. With the mandem, yeah, yeah, you yeah. marinate that, it's just yeah. like... A, a, a absolute madness in the brain just <laughs> sy just synapses just like hitting like right. you know and I think that's where when 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 my humor side is activated sure. that's, that's where it kind of goes were you, uh, were you sure. always kind of known I mean obviously like, like you said you know you, you you had a lot of humor you, you made the jokes with your friends but in terms of like a, a mass you know people knowing you in school yeah were you kind of known for that? Yeah, yeah, like a class clown kind yeah. of vibe. Yeah, yeah, defo, yeah. defo. I'd say like, I've, I've even dissected that. I mean, yeah, from, from young, actually. I remember like, I think I've always been a bit of an observer. Sure. And that's, I don't know, you can even, you know, analyse that even more. But <laughs> I think that that characteristic, you know, in comedy you need to make jokes, to, to yeah. connect with people, you need to be able to observe. I think that's always been a, a trait of mine is like observing my surroundings. And, um, and what was the question? Like, were you, know, <laughs> you known for... Yeah, being, so yeah, yeah, a class clown, definitely, yeah. definitely. So that's, that's, that's probably why it was so easy for you to transcend when you got to an, an adult age to start pursuing your own comedy in, in, on, with yeah, YouTube. Yeah, 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 definitely, um, definitely. So you did a lot of stuff with Jazzy. And, yeah, yeah, yeah and, early um, on. Early on, which those, those, those skits would go viral. I mean, you did the, the Polish brick layers? Yeah, bricker, bricker. Brick, bricker, bricker, bricker. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and then, um, which also, I think those, they, were, those, they went viral, which allo allowed you to get into certain platforms and media in terms of like a music video with Oliver Twist. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah. I remember seeing you back, back in the day. I was like, who's this kid, bro? And you were just doing the skanks and... Yeah. Yeah, bro. That, what, what was that? That must have been a crazy time when oh, all that was happening. Amazing, bro. Like, just because it's like, that's sort of the, I'd say the, the birthing in a way of like viral social media era that now mm. is, is pretty much an everyday reality for so many people. Um, I was just drawn to it. I, I was drawn to it. I had a lot of energy. A lot of energy, a lot of creativity in my in my that I wanted to like put out, and I wanted to kind of shock, and I wanted to like do the outlandish things, the absurd things. I've always been a fan of like absurdism, things yeah. that are absurd that don't make sense. Um, so that was that was kind of what what inspired me to get uh, and onto the platforms and activate myself, and uh, it, it worked. It kind of it connected with people, and then we had the Smokies Barbers. Yes, that we yes. used to film. Yes. That was Jazzy's Jazzy's idea. And you got kind of everybody together from from the UK scene, Amazing. Uh, and then the, the band video was was great because even that for me is like it's like a start of something because now you you look at Afrobeats and it's like one hundred percent like the, the views, yeah, the, the it's concerts, yeah, the, for real. it's like like a top genre in in even like say the, the Western world. It's really yeah. transcended. Yeah. Whereas that was like the first, from my knowledge, Afrobeat song to like enter UK charts. Definitely one of them, one hundred percent. Kind of be, you know, in that journey of of like you know the story of Afrobeats for me it was was pretty cool, pretty amazing. Looking back on it now, yeah, obviously yeah. back then I didn't know what the hell was going on. <laughs> <laughs> that was like my first ever invoice I sent. <laughs> okay, I like one hundred fifty pound. Do you know what I mean? And I was <laughs> gassed. I was like, I, was like, I even know, I remember the, the the lady who sort of plugged it. I was like, How, what's an invoice? Yeah. She's like, you put your details and then we pay you. Yeah, and I was like, what? Yeah. And I was even meant to, like, back in them days, I remember I was even meant to go to Nigeria and Ghana to dance, but I had uni. So I was meant to, like... Oh, you were supposed to actually go up there? Yeah, the band, oh, the band and stuff. But man. it was, like, really, like, toying in my head because I was... But uni was... Yeah, that's one thing that I probably wouldn't do again, personally. Okay. Uh, obviously, everything happens for a reason, so I don't, I don't regret it. But if I was to redo the journey, I, I wouldn't go uni, man. Sure. Because yeah. that was a difficult period, like, you know, uni and then kind of doing all these videos that I'm starting to do and then... It's like chasing your dreams and then doing yeah, something you know, that... That yeah. typical story yeah, of, of the inner conflict. Yeah, definitely. Which, as someone who likes to also think, I think it just creates problems internally. Yeah. Um, so I probably wouldn't do that again. Okay. But it was, it was a fun time, man. And yeah, it's just grateful that I, I got to experience that. 
And uh, looking back on it, it was um, it was a great man. It was just fun. Was that experience is what led you to meet all different types? Because I know you said that Jay Z would meet or bring people to the to the meetings, and you yeah. meet all, so is that how you led on to meet poet and and? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that yeah, just I think it's just things connect. Yeah, things connect. And they were obviously, oh, am I? Like because yeah. I, I wanted to do parodies. That was my thing. Sure. Because I, I remember watching like Guns and Pork, Shadrack and Amanda. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm on a boat, you know. I'm on a boat, boat man. Yeah, What's them yeah. guys? Um, Dick in a box and that. Ah, uh, what are they called again, man? The American. Dog. Yeah, I know you're talking about. And it's like uh, jizz in my pants. Jizz in my pants. That. That. Um, let's get it up, Lonely Island. Lonely Island. Lonely Island yeah. yeah. So I wanted to sort of do, do my stuff own like little that. version, Borat right. and all that. So that's where the parody sort of came from. It, like that inspired me. I used to watch that and be like, I want to do stuff like this. How can I create music videos? So I used to always have these visions in my head of like this. But yeah, Bricka Bricka, and it was like Cheeky Nando's and the Boris Bike song. Yeah. Just little things that I, I noticed were going viral in, in their own way, and I wanted to inflate that and make a music video out of it. Sure. And I'd have, I've always had, I'd always have like the whole video in my head. I'd know exactly what I want. Sick. And then I'd get the people and myself and da da da, and then just sort of get it, cameraman, and it all comes to life. And usually it's exact kind of, you know, I see the vision yeah. before I even quite visual like that. And it lays out. Yeah, so that was my the early journey was the parodies and the comedy and the dancing and just getting all that energy out there, bro. So yeah, very fun time, hundred yeah. percent, bro. Yeah, very man. fun. No, there's some classic really content there. Classic content. If you haven't seen any of it, I'm sure, well, I'm sure you have. Yeah, but it's brilliant. Even, even someone, like, someone I think on TikTok recently shared the the, the banjo liver twist. Yeah. Segment, and I was like, that's mad. That was like twelve years, ten years ago, whatever, eleven. But that's the and thing. People are just discovering it, and they're like, ah, oh, this boy went in. And that's then it. They got like. 500,000 views. I'm like, ah, like this is mad. But that's the thing for you. Is this a moment in time for you? But where, where that, what you laid down will always kind of like transcend yeah. time. You it's know awesome, what I mean? There's going to be so many people that's going to tune into it and find it and share it. Especially when, when anything goes viral, you know, there'll be opportunities for it to go viral again. Yeah. You know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So. So that song's a classic as well. Yeah, definitely. Bang Absolute bang. classic song. So, um, great moments. So, so what, what made you and Poet want to join forces and do that po- do a podcast together? And um, we said like early days, like yeah. couple of days. Yeah. Uh, well, I was at uni, I was doing all the comedy stuff, da, da, da. and just a company came in and said, couple of nighty. they said, yo, there's like an audition for this like weekly football show. And, and you're a Poet massive football up, enthusiast. You're yeah, massive, yeah, Poet ended up shouting me because he saw that I used to tweet about football a lot and have very outlandish takes. <laughs> and then he just shouted at me, do you want to come? came, I was at uni, he was like, we might get paid for this, like £200 a month, like a week, or I was like, I'm in bro, I'm mm. at uni, do you know what I mean? So I was in straight away, we got it over like all the other people that, that auditioned, and I just sort of started a whole other journey, yeah. where like, I'd still drop my little parodies here and there, but I think that's when I found it difficult to balance everything, Sure. because I had the football show every week, Yeah. sometimes we'd have additional shoots, you know, I'd have uni and the essays, and you got that for a couple of years now, you got family stuff going on, and then you got... You know, are you going to have that energy to then have your own creative ideas as well mm. to keep your own personal shit going? Um, which I think for me, I you know, unfortunately didn't have. Um, so that was when the struggles of balancing everything sure. begin, you know, yeah. even more. Uh, but yeah, I mean, look, man, even that. You've done some great things, fantastic. though. Yeah, you've done some great things. Journey, yeah. yeah. And, and that's still sort of, I'm still on it. Yeah, kind of. Because you're still interviewing footballers today. You yeah, know I mean? yeah, yeah, still, you know, still here and there, like, dropping in, like, hello. Yeah. Um, so it's been cool, man. That's just been a whole other thing, the early thing and this thing. Um, I think I've always, I've never really had a plan from the beginning. Sure. I remember even like after my first couple of viral videos, like my boy was like, "So like, what are you doing?" I was like, "I don't know. <laughs> this wasn't meant to happen." Like I was, you know what I mean? I only thought as far as like that's gonna go viral. And, All right, cool. I love maybe, it though. It's live real. Life. You're being real, man. I love it. So. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 I remember, it, it, even I'm thankful, like, you know, to get the football thing with Poet and stuff, but I don't know if I would have carried on in the uni. I would have yeah. said, fuck all this and, and, and binned it. But I do think, in some way, everything is meant to be how it's meant to be. You know, they can go into, like, the, the fate and stuff. Do you believe in fate and the kind of energy and then what you put out is what kind of returns all the time? And just maybe I start, that was my karma. I mean, well, I, mean, I feel like when you do something quite, like you, like you said, you're somebody who's always a bit thoughtful, you're a free thinker, free spirit. Not everything is going to align with you, like having to do everything all the time yeah. or, or just having to just 
have a life where you can't just decide what you want to do for once. Yeah, you, 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 you know? yeah and I get that. Yeah, I relate. Strange. I relate to that. Yeah. Like it's just end of the day, you want to live life. You want to make sure that not everything is have to be written in and, and I have to do this. Yeah. And like I just want to do what I, I want. I, to I do see the, I see how the you feel. I see the benefit in both. I think one hundred percent. Like both journeys of how people operate. I think the duality of organization, which even to do the parodies and stuff, you need organization to organize things. It's not that like I can't be organized and, and commit to a project, but yeah. it's just usually there wasn't a grander plan. And I think even to this age of, I mean, I started at eight, like 18, 19, I'm like 30, 31 nearly, and it's like still kind of like that. Mm. Even mm. today, I didn't, wasn't meant to be doing this. No, I was you just, 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 you just chilling, up. Bro. I was with my niece, like, just jamming, like, just thinking about you know, things. What are you up to? I'm going to come and chat. Yeah. <laughs> Go on in. <laughs> your, your brother, Andrew, some of friends, shout friends to, with. Shout out to K-Dak. But um, he's, he's a legend. So I like to, I don't know, the thing with me is I, I like to connect to people, have organic conversations. Yeah. And that, to me, I think is, is like very valuable. I like the small things. Yeah. I think that that's maybe another way of, of how I view life is I just like, I enjoy very small things. Yeah. And, Which is and, always and, taken for granted as and, well. And to me, they, they really mean a lot. Yeah. Like when I'm eating some food, sometimes I might just taste the food and be like, oh, I'm just like, yo, <laughs> taste is amazing. You feel me? Yeah. I'm like banging this thing and it's like, wow, this egg tastes great, bro. With some mayo on it. I see. That's mad, you know, because mayo yeah. and egg is just from like chicken, both of them. That I is true. Chuck some chicken in there. You're having like a hat trick <laughs> of chicken. <laughs> chicken byproduct everywhere. And then you speak to yourself. That's mad, and you know. Like, Yo, we no, have chicken true. and egg sandwiches with mayo. Yeah, we're a bit mad, don't we? Everything's from a chicken. Yeah, we're a bit mad still. That's, we as a nation's a Yeah, bit. it's peak on chickens. Yeah, poor chickens. But, yeah, so, man, just like the little things like that. And I think sometimes that perhaps, you know, <laughs> leads to a perceived disconnect with other people. Or maybe yeah. I don't I don't chase things that maybe... Uh, I, 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 I'm... Things... I think society perceives that we should chase things in a certain yeah. way. And then for me, like those little things are like so valuable and I really enjoy them. So, so are, you, are you somebody that's not a big... Um, like, you know how some people are like so big on getting the bag, making sure uh, they get the money. Are like, you you're not really big on materialistic and money of things? Of course. Like the, the, I wouldn't say materialism. I think what's more interesting as a concept to me is more financial freedom Yeah. rather than like material itself. I think financial freedom... Uh, living within your means is, is a powerful thing and I think I've, I've always sort of kept my like whether I've made money made less money or not making money so I've always kept a similar standard of living right I've never like gone crazy like early on maybe I went shopping a few times and that wore off quickly man mm -hmm. so it was just like I've never I don't really I don't know man I don't really want a car I don't want watches I don't want mad clothes always wear tracksuits and you know I mean nice bits here and there but nothing like yeah. it just doesn't doesn't like, doesn't grab me, you know. Sure. So I think more the, the element of like financial freedom where you can live within your means and have a, a, a way of living where you can do what you want every day. Okay. And to me, yeah, that's yeah. sort of the most empowering thing. Absolutely. So sort of managed in my own little way. Yeah. Still not there fully, but over the years that has been the way. It's it's interesting. I think mean, as you grow, like the concept of money even more becomes. It's just it's a constant dance. Yeah. I would say of of. Especially, especially now everybody has podcasts and mics. It's yeah. more, it's more of a dance now. And now when the conversations with well, like my brain goes like everyone's doing it, I'm, like, I'm not gonna do it. I, I, I hear you. Which totally, so totally. No, I hear you. It I hear is you. backward as hell, bro. It's like, not. I don't think it's backward. I don't know, man. I think I could, I can see, I can see the perspective of like more can be done even from my own way. But also, uh, I think I, over the last few years of, of kind of taking a seat back and sort of processing myself and my views and, and the world and how I relate to the world I feel I can speak now from a, just a place of more peace mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and a place of being more grounded right because I think there's so much information out there which is from reaction there's a lot of re reactivity which I also took part in in, in m many parts of my journey but I, I realized that that doesn't fulfill me okay and I'd rather speak to you and whoever I speak to from a constant place of, of a groundedness right which then I think that energy is either reciprocated and can lead to more groundedness. I don't want to contribute to to, to noise. Or right. I say like I don't, I don't feel that that's my path right now is to contribute to a certain type of noise. Okay. So I'm sort of I think that's another reason why I'm quite weary and and, and, and wary of, of what kind of message and content I put out there. Because you're saying that you just kind of just triggered a memory of yourself. I actually just remember I just remembered 
as you were saying that when um, the unfortunate incident happened in Grenfell Tower mm. and you were interviewed yeah, um, yeah, yeah. outside the tower. I remember watching that on Sky. Is it? I remember that. I remember watching mm. you. On, and you were very passionate and everything you said, I totally agree with, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and you were angry. You were calling out the government for the, you know, the lacks of daisy way they treat, you know, residents in that, in that area and, 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 and across, across the UK, you know, if, it's, if you're going to be frank. Um, you're not referring to things like that when you talk about what kind of energy you want to put out. If you if something was to happen no, today, that, that came from a place of that was, that that was, was yeah that was yeah, genuine. I remember when yeah, I did that. Yeah, um, that was from a place of like yeah anger, pure, um, yeah, like pure rage, a pure authenticity. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think what can happen sometimes after unfortunate events and when things become so, it can, things can almost become like a social currency, even mm -hmm. like social issues. Are, Very true. And I think sometimes we, our egos mm -hmm. can humans' egos can use things as opportunities to benefit them um, rather than the cause becomes almost secondary but the cause is used as a as a way to promote oneself yeah and i think yeah that after incidents like that and i started to become very wary of you know am i do, i want to do it from a from a place of of authenticity if i was if i was to get involved with stuff yeah. like that that was that was i would say from from myself an authentic case of of, of a reaction of definitely but I can gauge how after, not, not in relation to Grenfell, which was absolutely horrible, but I can see with other, other perceptions I've had of the world. Okay. You can, when it becomes, I, I like to ask myself the question, is that coming from a place of, am I trying to wow. make myself look good? That's mad. Or am I doing this because I truly feel like a well, message needs to come out from me? Can I just say respect? Because a lot of people don't do that. A lot of people yeah. don't do that. So big so up I'm yourself. Just weary. That's, that's amazing. Yeah, but that's, that takes time to, to process. Yeah. It's about growing, isn't it? There's a lot of conversations happening in my head. You yeah. know what I mean? So that's just why maybe I don't hang around with too many people. Yeah, I hear you. I'm having 10 convos, bro. Feel me? So, <laughs> man, 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 they might diagnose that as sight, really, but, you know what I mean? But we are. I don't know, I don't think so. I think you're very sound and very sound of mind and body. You just, yeah, you just think differently uh, from everybody else, which is great. I think, yeah, it's just kind of how, how I look at things. So anyway, that... Maybe not to that. That was that was honestly a horrible moment. That yeah, was, that was and you and, and I love the way how you the way you handled that the way you handled the reporter. You were just it was never you were not disrespectful. You just made sure that what you're saying is not being misconstrued and, yeah, and yeah. not twisted in any way. And like, I think you smashed it. I think, it was I think that was brilliant, bro. I, I, think you were... I, I didn't share it myself. I remember I was like, very mm. cautious of like I, I'm mm. not going to share this because the words are out there. And I remember, yeah, like, certain pages shared it and it kind of like got picked up and. But then, like, I remember people started to view me as, like, people that I would speak to kind of viewed me as some sort of, like, spokesperson. And I was like, yeah, ah, that's, bro. That, yeah, yeah. Even when they, they, they labelled me as an activist. Yeah, they the did. Sky, they did, like, yeah. I'm not, like, I remember, because everybody said to me, what, they, what should we put? What should they we said just, activist influencer, social, something like that. Social, social activist, like activist, something like that. Yeah. They were like, but they said to me, they went, what should we describe you as before the interview? It's like, are you, do you want to speak live? And I went, yeah, I'll speak. Like, what should we label you as? Like, what do you do? And I was like, bro, I don't care. I, was like, I proper don't care what you label me as. Doesn't interest me. Like, whatever, man. Mm. Like, what do you do? I'm like, bro, I don't know. Like, I just mm. create things. I don't know how to yeah. label myself. So they put activist. I wouldn't have labeled myself. I'm definitely not an activist. Right. Because I don't put, my life isn't that. Yeah. But, you know, I dipped into that sort of territory for a while, the sort of more political and social social cause yeah i mean well. it's real emotion it's real emotion and that, that was a horrific in, that was a, what happened was horrific so yeah, yeah so you know um let's just change up the, the subject a bit let's talk about your love for liverpool i know you're not so much a liverpool fan nah. these days nah. um, but you were a lifelong liverpool fan i was i mean lifelong I came here at five yeah kind of something that's still lifelong something happened yeah i got attached to that team who who was your guys mike who, lowen Okay. Yeah. Owen, Owen was the yeah. guy still. Mm -hmm. And then after that, obviously grew up, you know, followed the team, da -da -da, went to uni, was watching them there, started to work in football, had a bit of money, started to go games. Cause I didn't go games before. I mean, mm -hmm. immigrant dads don't, don't <laughs> take their kids to football games, bro. You know what I mean? Little Charlie's going, <laughs> my dad's taking me football. <laughs> I'm not going football, bro. I remember I had like, I played, you know, everybody's had trials at QPR. Like, yeah. All of London has, but. <laughs> the whole of London. But I remember when I was like, what, like, like, what like eight or something, and I had like played football, and I like, they did like they split up the pitch in three, 
and they were like, you can only like play in the zones right. that you're allowed to play in. And right. I played really well. Like I really liked that organized way. And I pressed the coach, had a couple of assists, I played in the middle. And they're like, yeah, you're gonna, you meet another guy, like Saturday, you're gonna go and like, have some trials, you know, like play yeah. at QPR. My dad never took me. <laughs> well, Saturday, he was like, no way, that's my rest day. So, uh, yeah. do you know what I mean? So there's yeah. the, I wasn't ever able to yeah, did, did, yeah. do things that maybe I, I desired to do. So yeah. when I made a little bit of money and I was able to have a bit of spare cash at uni, bro, I was going to Liverpool away games, bro, I was like, Suarez day, Suarez Sterling storage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, that, that, was that, that, that front three, bro. With the Gerard Crazy. and just like Gerard's kind of last days, the slip and all of that. Yeah. Like, I cried so much, man. I was I cried crazy, so man. much. I was upset, happened, bro. man. That was, I was bro, devastated. Bro, cried, tears, like when he slipped, oh. Yeah. Real emotion and tears, bro. I remember like sitting on a curb somewhere in West London. I came back from Serbia from a flight, went to the pub. Got a couple of beers. When he done, when he that happened, bro. Oh. Yeah. I was remember outside, just, just I tears. broke my heart, man. Horrible man, yeah. horrible. Even like, I remember when I, I got to the pub, I had like a sandwich on me from MS, had my, my luggage, came to a pub, and I was like, yeah, game's on, whatever. And I asked the guy at the pub, I was like, bro, can I eat the sandwich? He's like, yeah, 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 but I had a juice with me as well. So I'm eating a sandwich and I, and I banged the juice as well. And he's like, oh, I didn't say you can have, you can drink as well. Like, come on, like, respect the premises. I was like, bro, I was so, I was like, I was like what? I said, bro, if you told me I can. He's like, yeah, but I didn't say that. I was like, yeah, but I got it with the, the, the sandwich. And then I think it was like nil nil still, we're losing one, it was half time. And I went I went to the bar and I went, give me twelve pints. And the guy was like, What? I was like, I want twelve pints now. So I went, you said I need to buy a drink. I said, give me twelve. Yeah. And he was like, No, 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 no. I was like, no, no, who wants a fucking pint? And I turned yeah. around. All yeah. the people were like, oh, yeah, I was Smashed like, it. Who wants a fucking pint? I'll get you a fucking pint. So that was so you triggered something in me, bro. I got pissed. Yeah. Because he's trying to almost say that yeah. I'm taking the I was like, I'm not taking a piss, it was a genuine error. So yeah, the overreaction, you didn't have to go there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. And then I got a 12 You showed him up. And then I was like, everybody, get, get, grab yourself a pint. And then people were like, can I get it? I was like, yeah, man, fucking grab one, innit? But just win the league. And we lost. <laughs> 12 pints down, you know. I'm so like yeah. 60 pounds down. Yes, that's 60 pounds. I was like, it was like second year uni or third year. I was crying so much, man. Oh, but as I, as I grew up, as I, as I matured, I just, just, just stopped. So I feel like you stopped after you saw Liverpool. Success. I thought after yeah. you saw Klopp come in and do the the Champions League, Premier League, yeah. four four yeah, different man, trophies like, in one year. Like, as I said, like we were talking about, you know, I like to question things. So I, like, I can't be sitting on curbs crying over eleven men, bro. Yeah, you can. Nothing wrong with it. No, I hear you. But I hear you. I start to question, like, what am I really doing here? Like, why am I like the loudest in the stands, full of scousers? That, that's a lot of energy, bro. Okay. I'm not even. I wasn't born in Liverpool. Yeah. I don't. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like, yeah. obviously, I identified something that felt like a connection. Oh, it was a great team. I was team. looking for my tribe, shall I say? And then, as time went on, I was like, I can't keep doing this, bro. Yeah. So that was a real like cognitive moment of cognitive dissonance. I love that word. Where sort of like new thought comes in and challenges old belief and and ways. Love that. So I would be like. Rah, the old is like telling me, just keep going and rah, screaming. And then the news like, but why are you doing this, bro? Yeah. So then it's like, that happens, 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 happens. It's a bit of like, uncomfort- very uncomfortable feeling, isn't it? But I almost have started to enjoy that <laughs> as times have gone on. And then that side sort of took over. It was like, you know, this doesn't, it's not worth it, man. Yeah. Things, have hap- things happened on that journey that led me to have those conflicting thoughts, but... I'm like, nah, bro, I can't do that, man. But, so na- but so now you just enjoy games. Now you just go bro, to any, any game, game you, and you support any team that you, yeah, bro, you decide to. Yeah, like, and It looks like you're having so much fun when you during go During yeah. games, I'll support the... the and you th- switch, right? Yeah. <laughs> like see Arsenal you, City. I see you do that. I've seen you do that. Like Arsenal City, I was like, oh, you know what? I want City to win. And then Arsenal started playing real well and I was like, nah, nah, you know what? I want Arsenal to win now. Because I like how they're playing and they're young and their energy... And then City started winning and I was like, fuck it, score six. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I guess you can enjoy football that way because there's no personal... That's it. There's no personal there attachment. There's like a real personal attachment. But I, once again, it's like, it's almost like... Uh, what's, I guess what, what would be the way to view all that? I guess it's almost like mindfully yeah. watching football. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah, Maybe yeah. is it like a spirit... I don't know if it, I mean, that word sort of gets bandied around a lot, but like spiritual. Is it a spiritual way of looking at the game? I say maybe, maybe that's how I observe it now, and for, that has been a journey of almost 
of a spiritual nature right. um, or that lens of, of, of looking at how, how, how I even view and enjoy football. Okay, all right. Um, you take part. You don't. You, don't you not take? Do you not take part in the the football charity matches that happen with all the influences? I had it early yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, early on when I was a bit more out there. Yeah. What position did you play? You played, played in goal. Goal. And then sometimes I come out, come out and go up top. Okay. What yeah, yeah. What position do you prefer? Are you more of a goalie? Are you more of a? I mean, from young in goal, but then I'd say last four or five years, start to play football again during lockdown. Yeah. Skipping fences and just you know <laughs> Doing playing your football. Yeah. And then um, now I go up top. Just like okay. I want to play, I want to engage in the game. A goalkeeper is a very isolated and, and at times boring position. Yeah. If I need to, I'll go and go still. Yeah. But I was always I was always rubbish at goal. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. You have to, but I think even goalies, I think generally have to be a bit of a madman. You have to. Yeah. Go. They're always a bit like all keepers are a bit haywire. Mm. Mm. Like lean just mentally, you have, bro, you, bro, the man, I'm banging shots at you from. He's got this. Lever balls. Yeah, it's true. Meat tray. The only position I could play was either up front or. Right wing, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's my no, that's football. Football, sick. But, yeah, I, I love it. So fun, man. Go come play, come play, come play Brixton, bro. You will love Brixton come football, play for bro. Me, bro. Saturdays. I don't, I don't know if I'm that good though. Oh, is it? How, like, I'm I feel, not that I feel, good, like, I feel like you guys are good. <laughs> so, the, the standard is good. The st- where I play, the standard is really, really good. Yeah. I just got a feeling that you, m- you no, might no, be no. playing with some techie, real yeah. techie individuals. So so, bro. So so. Yeah. So, so, if you think you can play, I'd say come. Sometimes yeah, yeah. I feel like, what, you know what it is? If I play consistently, I'm, I'm, I'm done. My team's like a, like a Fulham, up and down. Yo-yo okay, team. all right. Because there's yeah, three okay. divisions. It's like eight aside. Three I'll, I'll take you up. I'll take and you up. Bam, bam, bam. Come this Saturday. We need, we need players. <laughs> Nobody can play this Saturday, bro. <laughs> all right, I'll give you right, a yeah, shout. Yeah, K9. K9, 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 we should come, we should come, bro. Um, last time I saw you was in Nando's. Yes, in, yes, uh, it was, yes, Like yes. Black, Black Friars. Yeah. And uh, you were just, and I was with my lady, and she just said, "Oh, he's so like approachable, and you just talk to any." And remember, you were, and even when we were having a conversation, in between our conversation, you were getting stopped by fans taking yeah. photos, taking selfies with you, and and then you were still having a conversation with me while while, while taking snaps. What like where does that humility come from? Because you're very humble, you're very easygoing, you're very approachable, which is one of the reasons why I love you. Um, but where does that come from? Is that something that you've taught yourself to be or was that something that you were always raised with with your, with your, with your mom? I think raised, I think maybe born a certain way but I think how I was raised, the unique circumstances of yes. what me and my family went through. Yes. You know, I think when, when you sort of come from, I, mean, I, I was lucky, my family was lucky, born during a war Yeah. to then go to another country and then come here as well in dubious ways and then claim asylum and it's like that's three countries by the age of five yeah so they're looking yeah. at like that's a lot of change and i think you know when you're here we were living in hostels and hotels with other refugees and immigrants so you're meeting people from a very young age from very different parts of the world i had like kosovo and albanian uh, friends i had like um kurdish i had like iraqi i had people from congo nigeria from like five six so you're living in these environments i think naturally you sort of become very yeah open and, and interested in people yeah that yeah, sort of is maybe there's like an element of survival as well where you, you have to know how to communicate to talk to and you're going to be i think for me i was just open because maybe there, there's that element of like you see the connection between us all because we've come from everyone this hostel that we lived in in acton but we're all just looking for a better life really that's right all our families have come here however they've come here that's right. you're starting from what is perceived as zero in terms of the social sense, so you know that's. I think that's. A, it's just. A, it's a different. It's a very niche and unique way to, to have your early years. And I think naturally that that uh, your first seven years are the most important. They say psychologically, emotionally, and then I think that's that's what forms you as a, as a character. That's so interesting. For me, that was that was um, mm-hmm. probably that probably the early upbringing leads to as the diary of a CEO would say. You know, <laughs> how was your early upbringing? <laughs> So, what trauma did you go through? <laughs> tell me about tell me about your pain. <laughs> and twenty uh, percent of myprotein.co.uk. Um, I know we just spoke about uh, illegal substances, but a substance I can promote and help you with. <laughs> no, I'm joking. They got Diary of a great podcast. I do watch them, but hey, man, your pod, one of one sometimes. of my favorite episodes of you and Poet, the Poet and Vuj podcast, is when you had Specs as a guest. Brilliant. Oh, Listen, let me tell you something. Yeah. 
a psyche. I, I, mean, I had, I had two of my good friends, my good friend Nathan, who I actually do live with, technically, yeah. and my good friend Gershwin. Both these guys are doing big things in acting. And we sat here and we, and we put that interview on. Bro, we were creasing throughout the whole jury. Yeah. You know how many times we had to read it up, bro? We had to read up the whole thing because uh, we were missing bits. We were just laughing. Bro, like, what is like working with Specs? I know you do a lot of work with him. He yeah, seems like a, a really... He's just like... Out of the world character, man. I think he all operates on a different plane. Definitely. His, 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 his uh, operating system yeah. is just slightly different to everybody else's yeah you know it, it's it's a, it's attuned to something which i can re definitely relate to yeah um yeah i can see how close it, you guys are really like you guys seem quite close yeah, it can be yeah. perceived as a madness once again <laughs> as can perhaps mine in certain parts and then maybe now but I, I can definitely relate to it yeah uh, and i appreciate i appreciate that energy yeah i think we need we need that energy in this world for sure you know, there's, there's all different types of energies but that one you need that to just kind of give you a little bright spark and make light of things and, and he's a man who definitely makes light of, of very dark moments yeah. which I can appreciate yeah. it's, it's something I also do people can say coping mechanisms but you know you've got to find a way to, to, to sort of endure and, and live in this world so yes for sure I think he does it in a brilliant way so yeah. for me Specs is yeah he's, he's a shining light I like him a lot and um, what are you working on at the moment, are you, is there anything? I know you said earlier in the interview that you, you know you're just taking it easy. You're not really thinking much I mean, about like, working. But is there any plans? Things, there's always things in the back of my mind. There's songs I haven't released, parodies. There's, there's, there's Let's like, go. Yeah, there is the conversation elements. There is, you know, me and poet obviously have been on a little bit of a break. Yes. You know, is it reactivating Shout that? Shout out to poet. Shout out to poet. Well, of course. Is it reactivating that in a certain sense? Is it? You know, I've been even in touch. Like some Serbian companies have been in touch with me. I've never, I've never really connected with that market. The, the yeah. Balkan market, shall I say, because language-wise, Croats, Serbs, uh, Bosnians, pretty much speak the same language. Okay. Um, so you know that market, I've never overly activated upon. Um, with type of my using my language, that I speak it fluently, to connect to people over there. So that's something that's always been toying in the back of my head. It's always like things sort of toying, you know, like hovering, hovering. It's just finding once again, I'd say, the motivation and desire. Yeah. To really just pursue and just go for it again. Yeah. I think. I've so much enjoyed the laid back element and like questioning things that that's almost at times it just feels far away I'm sure. and you're like, oh, I can see it. I can see the things, the ideas, the potential, the, but I'm like, oh, this is so nice. <laughs> I've been allowed, I've had the privilege to take that seat back yeah. and not chase. So it's almost like reinventing or maybe just doing the same things almost, but from a different place. Sure. Um, so yeah, there's multiple things. It's just so basically, you watch this space, but it might we'll take see. a it might, it might take a little time. It might, it might not. Yeah. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like even the, like Qatar was amazing. Like I, I was so grateful to just be able to go out Sorry, there. I mean, I'm there's <laughs> multiple ways you can dissect that yeah. like Qatar World Cup. Yeah. Social, political, the football fans. For me, I just I went and like I want to go watch Serbia. I want to watch football. I want to talk to people who I meet. And that's it. Everything else. Yeah. I, it was out of my hands. Yeah, for sure. Or I could have, you know, boycotted and not gone and played that angle. Like, yeah. But even people that did that watched it. So, exactly. You know, I think it's very, when you get into those combos, it can just it get gets very. Sticky, yeah. How do you approach it, you know? And yeah. to be pure with it and, and be like, you know what? I'm doing it from a place of whoever did whatever they did, I, I don't judge it. You know, some okay. people made millions, some didn't, some. I wanted to go and enjoy the football. Luckily, uh, and that's what you it did. was for work and, and I, I was grateful that I had the opportunity to do that. So Two more things I before... I love travelling as well. Two more, so oh yeah, of course. Can't say no to travel, man. No, 100%. I mean, you probably go North, for North Korea. If you don't go to North Korea, I'll probably do it. Just don't steal any ornaments because they will... They will mash you up, bro. Yeah, like that. Yeah, they will they mash will, you up yeah, differently, done. bro. So you've got to be careful and respect, I think. That that's every right. culture and it's different. has developed and is developing at a certain rate, different pace. That's right. And I think we can't enforce our own beliefs and views on, 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 on parts of the world which are I totally agree somewhere else you. perhaps. Totally so agree. Just gotta be careful. Totally agree. Two more things. Have a nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did that come from? I, uh, have a nice, uh, my slogan, came from a drunk man on the train. Oh, okay. A, a drunk Eastern European guy on the train. Uh, he was just like <laughs> patting a woman's dog. And then um, he was like, what is this dog? Da, da, da. And then she was like, oh, it's like something. Because see, she was a bit like weary of him. Seemed like an English lady as well. Sure. She was sort of like, and right. you can see he's drunk. He's like, oh, it's a nice dog, uh, you know. And then I think she went off the train, 
or he went off the train and he just went have a nice <laughs> and it just stuck I was like have a nice what yeah exactly he didn't finish it was it Borat has it's nice yeah it's a bit different and I've seen people like oh you got that from Borat I'm like no no no, 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 no. this is the drunk Polish guy from the train that is classic and he just, I just stuck with me bro so every interview that me and Poet would do I'd be like Oh, have, have a nice, isn't it? I used to just use it in my slogan, you know, use it in my captions on social media and stuff. And I just stuck, man. It just stuck. Like, and I was like, no, I love this. Have a nice night. Like, it's just open ended once again. Everything is so open ended. Because was it, was it a I thing where it. people were tweeting it to you, have a nice, on like, say, for instance, because you used to say it a lot on your shows and people who follow your shows will, would they yeah. tweet, tweet you the slogan back yeah. and then maybe go out and be like, have a nice? Yeah. And, and then is that why you start making the merchandise? Yeah, 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 right, yeah. okay. So I was thinking, how did you that. figure that would do well as a merchant? But now it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just the right. little community I have and that's awesome. Sort of like connected and then they went and then. Bernardo Silva did that celebration. Yes. Over Man City. Yes. You know, that was influencing 101. So like, I was like, I think, I might be wrong, it might have been the first time like a YouTuber or social media person has like in, influenced like a celebration. Apparently, you're probably right. I think, that, you're probably, I know you're probably right. Chance has done it since a yeah. couple of times. Um, so I may have been the first. So, you know, I'll take that. Come on, bro. Bucket list. That's history there, bro. There's been loads of little bucket list moments, you know, so... And another historic yeah, moment right. is the meme. Oh, yeah, the, the, oh, fuck, yeah, the, the, the meme, the meme of you man, as, man, a, man. as a young child in, in primary school with a nice mm. awkward smile. Um, so that's, that's blown up everywhere. So many people share Literally, that meme on you know, thinking, WhatsApps yeah, and all that. The other day I was thinking, like, oh, I haven't seen it used in a while. I was like, oh, like, oh maybe it's sort of you know, tailed off. And a 9gag, which is like a big page, used okay. it yesterday and it got like 100k oh, likes. Oh my goodness. So it's just like... Just life. It's just but social what, media. What, do they? Do you get rewarded back nah, for that? No, nah, it's just people use the image, don't they? Okay. I mean, that nah, just sounds long, like to like, like to go through all that yeah, process. Yeah, and I legalize it and sue people and then, oh, hey, you owe me, like. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and in the long run, you're gonna benefit from it anyway. So yeah, yeah exactly. just I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, I'm not really a fan of all that, like yeah, uh, legalities and copyrighting. I just think it's a bit dead. Like, do you know what I mean? I think there should be like a mutual understanding if someone's got an idea and it's theirs, just like respect the idea. Yeah. Okay. Like, and if someone does make money off your idea, it's like, all right, bro. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah. Like, yeah, hey, yeah. well done, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. It's, not, it's, not the end of, it's not the end of the world. It's I hope that money feels good, bro. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. <laughs> he will see. He and I hope you're, you're fulfilled. Eventually. I hope you have nightmares on my face when you go to sleep. Yeah, I hope nah, you, I mean, but obviously, they make mills. You can be like, oh, bro, yeah, you know what I mean. Chop me a little change, you know. That's crazy. I mean, there's obviously an element of it, but maybe you and I would be like, nah, man, that's wrong. Yeah. So interesting. But that's so. That is, social media is crazy, bro. I write a book about all this shit. Man, and I, I, think, I, 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 I hope you do. Bro. So many instances, so many situations, like that, you know, when I speak about it, I'm like, oh shit, that happened, and that happened, and this happened. And me, I forgot to talk about the meme. Oh shit, the meme as well. That's amazing. And it's still, you know, still kind of going and I definitely should have made more money by now. <laughs> Don't worry about it, man. Keep going. But hey, man, yo, we here, dude. You Keep know? going, man, bro. We're just fucking, just, just having a nice. Just enjoying it, man. So I'm just, yeah, we here, innit? Well, listen, let me cheers to you, my man. This is, this, this mm. is, thank you so much for joining I me don't today. Get the cheers water, but there's no rules. There's says. no rules, as Spec says. Exactly, so, um, okay. And thank you for joining me today, man. I really oh. love talking to you and I'm excited to see whatever you do next. Whenever you, whatever you want to do, I'll always be a huge fan. So, Fuck, you know. I appreciate it, man. Big love. Love. Thank you. Have a nice. Have a nice. Like, comment, and subscribe. Have a nice. Whatever you're meant to do now. Yeah. Are you gonna, no, because media's changing. You're going to chop this up on TikTok, isn't it? That Bare little did. subtitles. Yeah, Bare yellow <laughs> subtitles. <laughs> Yeah, that's what he's gonna do, isn't it? That's exactly bop, what we're bop, gonna bop, do. Bop, bop. <laughs> you know, the video playing It's gonna below. be one video of me and one video of you at the bottom. Yeah, yeah, Even yeah. though we're right here, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be like that. And and yellow like, subtitles. The, the things come in the context. The music videos will pop up below, and you you you, you end up doing a two shot wide shot. <laughs> no. You can start using all the footage that we talked about. I'm just gonna just download a lot of your videos and yeah, 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 crop yeah, it yeah, in. Yeah. I, I, yo. You know. I do this for your thing, you know. And I, and I appreciate it's that. Not even bro. from my platform. <laughs> Huge mad love, my brother. Thank you so uh, much, man. Love, Thank man. you so much, my guy. <laughs> you missed the handshake. Yeah, I know. We did it twice. Aye. Big Aye. up. Yeah, Skillet's World. We're out. It's a wrap. <laughs> yeah, that was sick. Bro, yeah. you were amazing. Bro, yeah, conversationist, bro. Ah, I Crazy, love conversation. bro. Thank you, my bro. It's good to be.